our weekly briefing. And under this, I'd like to call on our Moses Carter to brief you on what has been happening during the week. And also, we have with us one or two who will give you details of other events. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Louis Normal, ACP Louis Normal. And let me say, uh, we appreciate the presence of the Deputy Inspector General of Police for Operations, Honorable Marvin Sacco, who uh, is working tirelessly in making sure that Liberians can go to bed safe and sound. And um, he has committed his services to ensuring that the men and women in blue are working day and night in service to country. So I want to use this time to appreciate our Deputy Inspector General for taking some time. He will speak to some very serious issues in this press conference that will be of interest to all of you. Uh, at this juncture, we want to bring you greetings from the leadership of the Liberian National Police, headed by Honorable Patrick Sudu. Uh, of course, we appreciate you, members of the press, for always taking up your time proactively providing information to the citizens of this country. Uh, yesterday, we were in red light, where we provided you some update on progress made by the Liberia National Police in the fight against armed robbery, uh, in which five notorious, notorious armed robbers were gone down in an exchange, a fire and exchange with uh, officers, uh, in uh, specifically red light, the container site uh, area. And uh, we appreciated all of the members of the press. And I, the public is really, the commendations that are coming from the public are really, really encouraging. They are motivating to us. And it tells us that we are working day and night in making sure that our citizens can go to bed safe and sound. We've been very resolved. Like our Deputy Inspector General for Operations and the Inspector General said yesterday, any criminal that will use any force whatsoever, said force will be applied in similar form and manner. If you fire at our officers, we'll fire at you. We will not hesitate to do so. Because our citizens deserve to go to bed in peace and wake up in peace. This administration of the police, the I mean the operational arm of the police under the leadership of Onomabi Sakor is well prepared to make sure that we can police the state in making sure that our citizens can breathe some level of relief. And so, distinguished ladies and gentlemen of the press, we are, a lot of you have been concerned about the incident that happened in Maryland County, where one of our commanders uh, was accused of, uh, you know, assaulting a female officer of the Women and Children Protection Section. And so it is for me to brief you members of the press that the Professional Standard Division of the Liberia National Police has concluded its Professional Standard Investigation as part of our own internal protocols of conducting investigations internally uh, involving any of our officers that are involved or alleged of being involved with misconduct. Distinguished members of the press, Officer Jacob G. Coleman, General Commander of the Maryland County Police Detachment, has, of course, from the Professional Standard Division perspective, been for his failure to exercise maximum restraint and effective supervision as a commander acts on becoming of a senior police officer as a shrine in a police protocol. That Commander Jacob Coleman has been suspended three months of the job with appropriate salary deductions that upon the completion of 
Officer Coleman's suspension, he will be sent to the Liberia National Police Academy and Training Schools for leadership and administrative training. Officer Rebecca has also been transferred from Papa to Plebo for acts, I mean for reasons best known to the leadership of the police as it relates to you know the terrain that the incident happened. We're interested in her well-being. We want to make sure that wherever she works, she is protected and that she will have the space to operate as a women and children officer. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen of the press, this is to let you know that this administration does not shield any misconduct on the part of any officer or officers. Officers of the police are not above the law. They are not immune to disciplinary actions. Any officer that is caught in any discipline that may, any act that contravenes our own protocols or undermine our image, we will take, we will not hesitate or to take the appropriate actions in preserving the image of this noble institution. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen of the press, in the work of fight against criminality in Liberia, the anti-robbery unit, in collaboration with the Emergency Response Unit, the ERU of the Liberia National Police, in a gunfire exchange, have successfully gone down five armed robbers in the commercial suburb of Pinesville, specifically Red Light, at which time they had gone to a fresh frozen food area uh, at about 2 a.m. on Thursday, May 20, 2021. During police preliminary investigation conducted, one of the private security guards assigned at the fresh frozen food in red light identified as Joe Harris was tied and severely flogged, thus sustaining multiple bodily injuries, while another security guard identified as Mark Flomo is said to be on the run for allegedly being the mastermind behind the armed robbery incident. Police investigation also established that upon the arrival of the anti-robbery unit and the emergency response unit, they came under heavy gunfire. During the exchange of fire, five of the armed robbers identified as Nija, D.F. Foot, Charles, Charlie, Jesse, and Small Jerry were shot on the spot. Their remains have been deposited at the John F. Kennedy Mortuary for preservation. Meanwhile, the Liberia National Police has retrieved 388, 335, 388,000 335 Liberian dollars and turn said amount to the manager of the French frozen food company in Red Light, Mr. Masu Accra, while the oxygen tank and two single barrel shotguns that were used in the commission of the crime are presently here at the headquarters of the Liberian National Police. I want to sign this caveat that anyone that is bent on terrorizing our citizen will not go with impunity, but we made to face the full wrath of our officers of the Liberian National Police. Distinguished members of the press, recently there has been issues in Grand Jida County, of which a lot of you are interested in knowing what is the current update of the situation in Grand Jida County. Following the violent incident in Grand Jida County on Tuesday, May 18, 2021, which was characterized with looting and burning of properties, 16 suspects have been arrested by the Liberia National Police and have been forwarded to the court for prosecution. According to police preliminary investigation, a Fulani national identified as Adama Soul and victim Abraham Flacker got into a scuffle 
over a mutilated Liberian banknote in which the victim was hit on his forehead and was rushed to the hospital and later discharged. Why suspect so was arrested, charged with aggravated assault, and forwarded the court for prosecution. The investigation court established that victim Abraham Flacco was discharged from the hospital and later died after several days of the incident. Upon hearing the death of Abraham Flacco, a group of angry crowd believed to be motorcyclists moved to Adam and Soul's provision shop, other nearby looting and vandalizing businesses in avenge of Abraham Flacco's death. While the police riot unit was responding to the scene, one of the motorcyclist union personnel collided with the police emergency vehicle and was rushed to hospital. Upon receiving said information, the angry crowd went to the Grand Jury County Police Department head office, looted the police station, and set it at blaze. Very unfortunate. Those arrested and followed at the court for multiple charges ranging from rioting, failure to disperse and arson include Catherine Barlow, George Warren, Charles Gay, Emmanuel Sion, Philip Davis, Prince Colley, Ephraim Nuo, Obidiah Blamo, Harrison Tallow, Prince Colley, Peter Sumo, Thelma Bangu, Vera Pine, Marie Colley, and Stanley Cooper. Meanwhile, the Motorcyclist Union personnel, T. Wilson Neiman, who collided with the police emergency vehicle, has been discharged from hospital. It is our duty to also inform you, members of the press, that the Liberian National Police has retrieved a green Nissan Amira vehicle with plate A12498 that was discovered in Dakwi Town in the Patri Fatu community around the Somali Drive with documents bearing the name of Asif Fakile Fala, a resident of Habel District No. 1, Magibi County, who was harassed, terrorized, and vehicle taken away from him. The, vehicle, the investigation also established that the vehicle allegedly went missing on the 19th of May 2021 at about 13 hours and was discovered on May 20, 2021 at 11.45 a.m. The vehicle is presently parked at the Zumpo base on the Somala Drive in the Topo Village community pending further investigation. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen of the press, it is my pleasing duty and honor to present to you the Deputy Inspector General of Police for Operations, very hard-working Deputy Inspector General on Marvin Sakho, who will provide you for the very important updates on this press briefing. From on Sakho, you're welcome. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Honorable uh, uh, Good afternoon. The first thing I want to say, uh, thank you to the uh, member of the Pope uh, Estes and uh, the Ghana men and women of the Labour National Police. For the past days, uh, we have we we, we've been receiving information of increase in uh, criminal activity within the community, within Morovia, and also the Liwa counties. So we worked together as a team and put together our operation plan. And we are starting to see such plans and really result. So again, I want to say bravo to the Ghana men and women of the Labour National Police, to be specific, uh, the anti-robbery, the patrol, the PSU, and that of the, uh, the ERU. The situation in uh, Benjila is quite unfortunate where citizens that are disenchanted for whatsoever reason will go to the street and burn down to this station. The place that every citizen should have access to the to, to seek justice. You know, when it comes to the peace and security of this country, we are in charge of internal security. So for our own people to attack our officers, especially for a situation that already been handled by the police in a very professional manner, it was a situation investigated, charged or done, for the court, for legal proceeding. If for whatsoever reason you have any other doubt, I think you used to see a legal channel 
to seek redress. So we want to say this, we want to send a caveat to every Liberian, even foreigners that live within our borders. You have to respect the rule of law. Our country is governed by laws and not men. And we want to make it very clear that those involved will face the, way, the full weight of the law. Then the issue about we have our, our Nigerian national from the United States, South African. South African. So, uh, South African. So, this is the South African lady were bringing this particular drugs into the country with uh, a Nigerian national. Liberia? You're Liberia? Okay, we're looking at your passport. He's claiming Liberian nationality. They are the ones that have been busted. Uh, they have brought cocaine into the country. You have to take it So yesterday I received information from one of my sources that there was a South African coming into the country with a certain amount of drugs. So what I did, usually I would reach out to my counterpart, the uh, Liberation Law Enforcement Agency, I reached out to them. And uh, I got a few of the Liberation National Police officers who went at the airport. So we waited there from 3 p.m. up to 7. So the flight, she was on board of Kenya, the Kenya airline, came in around about 6 p.m. So the, from the security sector, we say, we will say uh, 1,700 hours, or 1,800 hours, I mean 6, 6 p.m. So for our surveillance, we say 6 p.m. So within that time, I asked, uh, usually it has to be a joint security effort. So I reached out to the commander at the, uh, uh, the immigration commander at the airport. I will say thank you to the LIS or team to cooperate with us. I was able to take possession of the uh, travel document, visa on, on a router. So I got the immigration uh, commander, I gave the information to him, and I told him how to be coordinated in a very professional manner. So when she got, got up the, uh, the plane, she gave her COVID-19 test, and uh, the immigration commander was uh, to locate her. She's from South Africa. Can you please bring her passport? Go no, and confirm that. So she was located. Okay. She was located and uh, escorted to the immigration office. So after she was processed, she went to custom. And uh, this copy of her passport, you can see the back here of uh, South Africa. So she's also African. So this passport. Uh, her date of birth is uh, February 27, 1982. Name, Masia Timbuka Chirugi. That's, that's, that's her name. Hey. So after that, she was clear. So we took possession of her and brought her back to the National Police Headquarters. So in the process of uh, the investigation, this gentleman here, is the gentleman that yeah, she was to make contact with. So she is a transporter, and he is the one that lived in Liberia, a Nigerian national that lived in Liberia, was the person that she was here to give the information to. So this is the Nigerian so guy. So we were to make contact with him and told him, he actually did not know that this lady would be arrested. So it was coordinated in a in 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 manner that, you know what I mean, we were part of the team, almost like a syndicate. So I took possession of the lady along with the, her suitcase, got hold of him. He was actually posted at the Ototo uh, gas station by the airport. Got hold of him and escorted him to the headquarters of the National Police. So we'll go back and we'll go back to. Come back. Come. 
So you see um, both nationals, uh, uh, she's South African, she's the transporter, and the guy there is a Nigerian. Uh, you're talking about, uh, this is the uh, drug, heroin, I think it's cocaine. That was busted. So these are the drugs uh, that's, that were brought into the country by this South African national. And uh, it is actually a big uh, delivery contact with the uh, Nigerian guy. So you see the Deputy Inspector General, that's the suitcase. So you see the suitcase there, and these are the drugs. So the essence of this is to show how drugs are being brought into the country. So I used to work at DEA, so I know the way in which they operate. So she had her clothes in the, in the, in the suitcase here, and I asked her in the presence of my, my female, because she's a female. So I got a female officer to actually, you know, interact with her. So in the process, the suitcase was open, she opened it up. We asked her to take, remove her things. She removed her things. As you can see, she removed it. Then I took possession of the suitcase, empty suitcase. Worn out. Took possession of it, it was very heavy. So I asked her, I said, do you still have anything else in it? She said, no. So that's how it worked. Then we usually remove the inner part here. They will remove it. Excuse me again. Who can get drawn on? Yeah, yeah. We have gloves. So I just want to, you know, you know, spray how it works. So yeah, every one of those stuff. Yeah, every one of them. So they'll remove it and stack it in the back like this, and they will put the cover back on. Yes, yes. And close it back. So no more, they'll get thread and uh, you know, go ahead and seal it up. So even if you go to custom, you won't be able to identify that. So what I did, I got a knife, my knife, this is my knife. I told her, I said I'll be responsible if there's no drugs in it, I will be responsible with you know, to replace a suitcase. So I was going to open it up. After that, the next thing is that it was staying you know, heavy. So I took the knife. And when I removed the knife, there was powder on the knife. So I knew there was something in there. So we were able to remove the inner part. Somebody, somebody help me. So this is a major, major bust here by so we'll the Deputy Inspector General. And that's what we saw in there. So, so looking at this from my experience working at DEA, this is a hard substance to be identified yet. Cocaine or heroin. heroin. So what I did is that when I took the nerve in the package, you can see there's a, there's a hole in there, right? Oh, my nerve. Let me just show something. I just went for the, you know. So I'll just open it up a little bit. So you see it? That's raw, raw. So it's raw. So it's either heroin or cocaine. So if you look at this, we did, we got a scale and weighs around by four, four kilo of uh, Heroin or cocaine to be identified. Right. So if you look at the market value, estimated market value, we're looking at probably between 100 and 150,000 US dollars. So what they usually do is this. They have something called precursor. It's almost like a powder. They will mix it up, because this is a raw substance, they will mix it up with the precursor and expand the drugs. So it increase the quantity of the drugs. So you can actually sell this market value 150,000 for close to 300,000 to, to 500,000, depending on the amount of uh, precursor that you are on this. So ladies and gentlemen of the press, I uh, want to say this. These are some of the people who are bringing justice to the country that are affecting our youth. And we are saying this to our brother and sister at the airport. You have to be very vigilant. This judge did that very crafty. So she's a transporter, and we're looking at her passport. She has traveled to Brazil. She has traveled to India, so she, that's her job. She transport for a drug deal. And according to her, the brother of that, of the, of that individual, the Nigerian guy, to be identified, lived in South Africa. So she made contact with, 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 with her, he made contact with her, and linked her with her brother that lived in Liberia. So he packaged the drugs, and she is the transporter, 
that brought the package to deliver it to her brother and she will get paid in return. So uh, she was scheduled to leave on Sunday. So her wife wants to come and deliver the drugs to this individual, get paid, and then she leaves the country on Sunday. So we are trying to say this. Uh, I spoke with some of the, the head of the Northern Drugs Enforcement Agency and also the immigration data of the, uh, the, the, the custom at the, at the airport. We have to be very vigilant. You have to be on top of your game to actually get hold of the drugs that is coming in this country. Because if I have not received that intelligence, can you imagine the past two uh, of South Africa, uh, Kenya, and no, by no means this was detected. Because the way in which it's done, it's done in a way where if you use a scanner now, it will, it will be very hard for you to detect that you have just in it. You just have to actually know what's unfolding for you, you to actually uh, catch the trick. So we are going to do all we can. Like I spoke with my counterpart from the Drugs Enforcement Agency. She's going to be, she and uh, the gentleman there, they are going to be processed, profiled, and along with the drugs. We're going to turn her over to the Labyrinth Drugs Enforcement Agency for legal proceeding. She asked me yesterday, what's the amount of time she's going to spend in jail? I told her, I said, the court will decide that. So I just want to give the information out to the public that the Labyrinth National Police is just not only involved in uh, criminal, going after criminal at night. We are also, we are the modern unit. We have unit that are involved in different activities. This is one of our activities here, to make sure that we, 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 we combat the proliferation of illicit uh, 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 drugs in this country. It's the same thing, the same thing all the time we arrested about 20 pieces of single barrel for Ganta to combat the proliferation of illicit or small arms in this country. So we are going to do all we can because we have been given the mandate by law to protect and defend. But what we are saying, we need the cooperation and collaboration of all Liberians because crimes are being committed in the community. If you cannot give her the information, if you cannot feed all with the information, trust me, we are not everywhere. So again, I want to say thank you for coming, and I will turn uh, over to our... Okay, Mr. so again, distinguished members of the press, and those of you that are following on social media, we appreciate all of your time taking in the diaspora to always join us in these uh, you know, briefings. And thanks to the Deputy Inspector General for Operations for this achievement. This is another achievement. Uh, and we remain very much resolute in making sure that we can go beyond what you are seeing now in alleviating uh, people from the issue of drug, illicit drug, the issue of crimes being you know, perpetrated in rural areas of our country. So uh, a lot of you, some of you may have questions to ask, yeah. but please your questions will be limited to the issues that we've discussed and um, we can call it a day. So you, you are welcome to ask your questions. Yeah. Um, my question is... Who's this? Yeah. Mike. Yeah. This is Kwame. Please do not talk to them. Please. Come in. Come in. Uh, Please. Kwame. Yeah, yeah. Kwame Opa Weeks Linda. Uh, my question is, uh, 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 has to do with our youth. We know uh, there are a lot of the Liberian youth, every county that you tour, uh, being labeled as Zogos, as Riggs youth, whatever name we're giving them, because of this particular substance coming into uh, uh, the country. Now, what's that collaboration between you and the LDEA that uh, 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 led to this bust? Or is this something that always you're going to keep uh, 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 going all, all alone and then turn them over to the DEA? Yeah, this is not just the only uh, collaboration within the joint security. Okay. If you even go to the headquarters of the Labor uh, Justice Enforcement Agency, you ask, we are turning over a lot of other drugs that have been arrested. So there have always been collaboration, coordination among the security sector in making sure that we combat the proliferation of the drugs. Because the issue of drugs, it's not just limited to Liberia, it's a transnational issue. Looking at our drug law, the drug dealers take advantage of our law. They, not, they are not only just importing the drugs in Liberia, the drugs are also being manufactured in Liberia and wow. exported to other countries. So it's a transnational issue that needs to be handled and continued within our border. And also, people usually talk about the law being weak. Look, let me say this. Even in the absence of a weak drug law, 
if everybody can play the part and prosecute, prosecute those that are bringing those drugs in our country that are damaging our youth, trust me, you don't need a, a tough jaw law. We have the evidence. We have everything that you need to prosecute. Prosecute, sentence, and let them face the full weight of the law. Right. And after that, they should be deported. If you actually check that gentleman in the back there, I can guarantee you that he may have been deported from this country and he ran back with him on the So it has to be coordinated properly where we are actually with full accountability of those people who are being deported due to crime they are committed within this country. And it's a serious thing. So we can go ahead and uh, make the law non bailable But what happens if the other team member, because I don't want to just, you know I mean, take a specific group of people, all the right. team members are not playing the part. Because I can take the drug and my other team member and say, well, is the evidence, the evidence are not important enough to actually prosecute? What can I do? We all have to play our part. It is very important. All right. Finally, you sound a uh, follow-up. Uh, you mm -hmm. sound frustrated. That would be the final yeah, yeah. You sound so frustrated. Are you suggesting that uh, every time there's a bus, and I know you've been serving uh, with the LDEA, uh, that there's a bus, justice never get to to finally meet the culprit? Well, you can't. You can't either blame the court system because it's a bailable offense, right? So under the law, for example, that gentleman, right? Maybe by Saturday, you see a lawyer coming in and asking that. You want to make sure the kids go to court. If that gentleman and the lady go to court, they have the right to a lawyer to actually get a bill and get out. Wow. So it's a bailable offense. So sometimes it's not just from the angle of the joint security, the police, LDA, but also the court. You can't believe it, but it's law. Right. So we just have to strengthen the law okay. for it to work in the interest of every one of us. Okay. We have brothers and sisters that work on drugs. Yes. No, you, you no, no, no. You mentioned the name. Let's say, please, hold on. Hold on, just a minute. Please recognize before you ask your question. Please. Please. Yes. My name is Reverend Gamil Roma, Reverend East Public Trust. Do you care to tell the property or the amount of value properties to whom they show in going to their country? Oh, okay. So you talk about properties being destroyed. Our, the value, yes. well, an assessment is currently being done to establish value. But like we said to you, those properties, we have a police station that was, you know, burned down and some other properties were looted. And to speak, or tell you a specific value now, we are disabled. So there's an assessment currently being done to that effect. Thank you. And I also want to know, why is it that those are rubber arms that they use? And when they say they were a teacher, why is it that it's been here? Okay, okay, listen to me. The first thing is that those who actually went at the crown scene, those weapons that were used, were available. Yes. So it's unfortunate that, you know, we have not been yeah, able to, yeah, he was not even there to actually see it. But yeah, was it that was yeah. there? We have a couple of other stations. Yeah, and that's why, right. even if you, if you go and follow the video clip, you'll see that the weapon will be available. Okay. Even where they discharge the, 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 the silver barrel on the door, you can see the uh, pattern on the door. Because usually they, they maybe make me read that in the press release that this is the unnormal this and what my this that. But this, so this, this, not, this, this how it works. A single barrel does not have a serial number on it. Only a legal manufactured weapon right. has a serial number. So for example, if you have something like a, a Glock 19, the company that manufactured that Glock 19 will say Glock 19 this company, right, with serial number on that. But when a single barrel is, is it's been manufactured locally, so you will not actually have that information on it. Right. But when, when, do we, when do we know exactly the substance of what we have here? Because we're uh, approximating not exactly what you people confiscated. What do we know and exactly what do we charge them and process them for the LDA to tell us? Because so, I'm concerned of the street value, you are also approximating all that particular. Yeah, so the issue is that I reached out to uh, the LDA, but it's just like. They had all of our kids that they actually the court the zone. When I think in my give it, there was another arrest made and they wanted to do the carry on the, the uh, prosecution. So what happened is that when I call, those that are responsible for the testing and come up with the market value, all of that, they actually went out. So he asked that when he returned from the court, he will make sure that it comes to the headquarters of the national police 
to actually get the actual value of the drugs and identify the type of drug. But I can tell you, it's two things. Either it's a cocaine or heroin, based on the smell and what I've been dealing with. Yes, yeah, Mr. Siako, what is your advice to the legislature in terms of passing a strong drugs law that will penalize people in terms of drugs? Okay, we, we will say this to uh, the first branch of government. That it's important that we actually work with the Labour National uh, Police, the immigration, as I say, the whole security sector in making sure that the law is very strong. Because I can guarantee you that we we'll have a very strong law in the community, not only just a strong law, the community have to help us. Because those drug dealers live within the communities. Our brothers and sisters, our mothers, our uncles, our aunts, Actually, they are married to those drug dealers. So sometimes you see drug uh, DA officers who go after they are received some intelligence to effect an arrest, they will be attacked by people who live within the community. So it is not only just about the drug law, but even the community, we all have shared responsibility in making sure that we eradicate, uh, you know what I mean, the illicit drug out of this country. Okay, so thank you so much, guys. Uh, it's a pleasure having you guys take up your time. This is your business and it's also our, our business of providing you updates regularly on progress we are making here at the Liberia National Police. I want to use this time to appreciate our Deputy Inspector General for Operations on our call for coming. Uh, we hope that next time we're going to have our Inspector General also speak to you. Uh, we are here committed to serving and protecting the national Thank you so much for coming.